In this second thigh sulfate titrations video, we're going to look at some more awkward questions. But just before I start the first one, just a quick overview of the sort of theory behind the titrations. We're going to use an oxidizing agent to oxidize iodide ions to iodine. This iodine feeds directly into the titration and we use sodium thiosulfate solution which contains this S2O3 2- ion of known concentration to react with the iodine. We use the results from the end point of the titration to work out the moles of thiosulfate. We then can work out the moles of iodine which is the same as the moles of iodine from the first equation because these this iodine was made here and then we can track back to the original oxidizing agent and work something out about that. So here's the first example for you. We've got 13.2 centimeters cubed of potassium iodate 5 solution. So that's sitting in this conical flask. Potassium iodate 5 contains the IO3 minus ion, that's the iodate 5 ion. And to that, an excess of acidified potassium iodide solution is added. The oxidizing agent is the iodate 5. That's going to I, that's going to oxidize, sorry, the iodide to iodine. And so the reaction that takes place in here, there's the result of that. So this brown solution in here, this indicates the iodine that's produced. And then the titration takes place and we're told that 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate solution is used and 41.4 sorry 41.1 is the average titra and we have to calculate the concentration of this original um, potassium iodate 5 solution i've put the two equations that are involved in this experiment on the board just in case any of you would like to have a go at the calculation yourselves um, before I go through the answers. So you'll be familiar with this equation. This is the titration equation. So that hasn't changed. The new equation is this one up here. So that's got the iodate 5 ion and it's oxidizing the iodide ions to iodine. So if you want to pause and have a go at the calculation and then we will go through the answers. As always, we start by calculating the moles of thiosulfate ions. So you can see in red, we've got the concentration multiplied by the volume in decimeters cubed. So we get 8.22 times 10 to the minus three moles of thiosulfate. From the mole ratio in this equation here, the moles of iodine is half the moles of disulfate, and so we get the moles of iodine in here coming out at 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3. This is where it can get tricky for quite a lot of people. So we've just worked out the moles of iodine here, so that's that 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3. Where did they come from? They came from this first equation. So these are the same and the confusion I think it probably arises from the fact that there's a 3 in front of the I2 in this equation but there's no number in front of this equation that doesn't matter these this iodine here is that iodine there so that's that's what you've got to get clear in your head Now we factor in the mole ratio in this equation. So the moles of iodine, 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3. Well, the IO3 minus ion, there'll be a third of those. And so therefore, it's 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3 times a third, which is 1.37 times 10 to the minus 3. Now we can calculate the concentration of the oxidizing agent, the IO3 minus. So it's the moles divided by the volume, this 13.2 cm cubed in decimeters cubed, 
and to three significant figures that comes out at 0 0.104 moles per decimeter cubed. So if you got that right, very, very well done because that is, that's quite tricky. And it's this bit here, that's where the confusion lies. So the next one I've got for you is this one. Um, we've got 39 centimetres cubed of potassium manganate 7 solution and that is added to 61 centimetres cubed of potassium iodide solution. So this is the oxidising agent and it's going to oxidise the iodide to iodine and so the result of that would look like this. So we've got the brown iodine formed by the reaction between those two chemicals and you can see the equation for that up there. Then, sort of tricky part, 25 cm cubed of that's taken out and that's what's used in the titration. We've got the concentration of the thiosulfate sulphate there, 0.75 or moles per decimeter cubed and a tiny little end point of 4 centimeters cubed. And we have to work out the concentration of this original KMNO4 solution. So again, all the information's there on the board, so if you would like to pause the video and have a go, and again, see if you get it right. Moles of thiosulfate first, so you can see in red there at the top, 0.75 concentration, multiplied by that little end point of 4 cubic centimetres, which in decimeters cubed is 0 0.004. So, moles of thiosulfate, 3 times 10 to the minus 3. Moles of iodine, I've got the equation on the board now, is obviously half of the moles of thiosulfate. So we've got it there, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Come to a, a, a first tr tricky part of the calculation now. So we've got 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of iodine here. So that's in 25 centimetres cubed. Remember, we took 25 out of this solution here and used it in the titration. So we need to work out, well, how, do we, how much do we have to scale this up? So this solution was made from 39 of this and 61 of this. And that gives us a nice round 100. So this solution had a total volume of 100. We took out 25. So obviously these moles here are a quarter of the moles in there. Written there at the bottom, the moles of iodine in this flask will be 6 times 10 to the minus 3, so 4 times these. Remember, this iodine was produced by this, this first reaction here, and so this 6 times 10 to the minus 3, well you can see I've written it underneath the 5i2s there in this first equation. So the moles of MnO4 minus ions are going to be 2 over 5 times that. So we can see here, I've got that calculation. The moles of MnO4 minus ions is 2 over 5 from that mole ratio times the moles of iodine. So we come out with 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of MnO4 minus. These 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of MnO4 minus must have been present in this 39 centimetres cubed of the potassium manganate 7 solution. And so the concentration of that is calculated by the moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. And so to three significant figures, we're getting 0 0.0615 moles per decimeter cubed. The last example we're going to look at involves bleach. Now bleach contains the chloride one ion, that's ClO minus, that's the active ingredient. So we've got the visualization of the information here. And again, I'll sort of encourage you to pause the video, have a go yourself, and then we'll go through the answers. So we've got 50 centimeters cubed of bleach, i.e. the ClO minus ion. That's um, reacted with excess Ki solution. That's gonna make iodine, so the flask will go brown. 
the iodine produced is titrated with 0.2 moles per decimeter cube sodium thiosulfate solution and the average titrer came out at 29.5 centimeters cubed and we have to calculate the concentration of this ion in the bleach so we've got the equation this is the equation that takes place inside this flask when the ki is oxidized by the um, the chloride ion in the bleach and the other equation obviously um, i'm not putting on the board because for the exam you would probably need to know that um, off by heart so have a go pause the video have a go and we'll go through it when you're done good luck and there's the moles of thiosulfate in the corner there 0.2 times the volume and there's the moles of thiosulfate calculation so the concentration multiplied by the volume in decimeters cubed and that comes out at 5.9 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The moles of iodine, of course, is half the moles of thiosulfate. So we've got the calculation for that down here in brown. So that's 2.95 times 10 to the minus 3. Where did these moles of iodine come from? They came from this equation here. Remember, this, this iodine produced feeds directly into this equation. So these are always the same. So that's also 2.95 times 10 to the minus 3. And we've got a nice 1 to 1 ratio between the I2 and the ClO minus ion in the bleach. So this is also 2.95 times 10 to the minus 3. And finally, the concentration of the chlorate one ion, the ClO minus ion in the bleach, will be the moles divided by its volume. So we have 50 centimetres cubed of bleach solution. So in decimeters cubed, that's 0.05. And that comes out at 0.059 moles per decimetre cubed. So I think we've well and truly covered all bases with um, thiosulfate titrations. The problem is there's so many examples um, that the examiner will always find one that your teacher hasn't um, gone through with you. So if you can follow the method, if you can just keep sort of keep calm, follow the method that you've seen on the on the two videos that I've put out. Hopefully you will get all of the marks. There's no reason why you shouldn't.